Ah, the 80s. The years of big hair, big clothes statements, big weddings, big bands, big money, big movies and not so big computers. So rock your band-aid like it's Christmas time, call up your local Ghostbusters, reflex your fingers with a bit of Duran Duran and take a trip to 1984 for the top 10 PC games. The first game off our list in at number 10 is The Ancient Art of War. If you've played games like Warcraft or Command and Conquer, then you'll know this is the granddaddy of all the real-time strategy games. What you may not know as well is this is one of the very first games that used IBM's 16 color EGA card which came out in October of 1984 and I'm showing you that version here. Now the objective of the game is to win a series of battles using four types of troops, knights, archers, barbarians and spies. There are 11 campaigns to play including both skirmishes and capture the flag style missions. Both the terrain and the enemies are made up from artificial intelligence that was way ahead of its time back in 1984, making this game an absolute classic for everyone's collection. If you haven't played it and you like games like Command and Conquer, then go straight ahead and play this one. In at number 9 is Icon, the quest for the ring. The story goes, beautiful maidens live in the river Rhine protecting the gold that lies there. It is said that the owner of this gold will learn secrets of immense power, but in order to possess the gold, the person has to renounce love completely. Years have passed and nobody dared make such a sacrifice, but finally a dwarf named Albrecht decided that power was worth more to him than love, and he took control of the gold and became a dark ruler of evil creatures. Will a hero ever rise brave enough to stop the madness? Oh! Like more basic games such as Net, Hack and Rogue, this game is a dungeon crawler with a colourful graphical take. In fact, the graphics looked on a CGA monitor more like a Commodore 64, and in fact, the resolution was 320 by 200 with 16 colours. That was amazing for its time. As you traverse the levels or dungeons, you'll find yourself getting stronger with more weapons and as well more bonuses. The maps are clever because they've got a slight bit of randomness. It is a challenging game, it looks a bit basic but it keeps you playing for hours and hours. A great game. Spy Hunter is up at position 8 in our top 10. Now this one here came out in the arcades the year before in 83 and then was ported to the PC as well as many other platforms in 1984. The PC port wasn't great, I gotta be honest with you, mainly the CGA graphics really letting it down. However, it is still a very playable game and if you look past that, you can see that the Spy Hunter itself is a tip of the cap to good old James Bond. In this game you're driving about in a fictitious but quite awesome kind of car. You've got guns of course and you can get upgrades to those guns as heat seeking missiles amongst other nasty weapons. Of course all you're trying to do here is drive along the road and mind your own business but oh no the baddies are out to get you. They'll bump you, they'll bash you, they'll shoot you and then of course later on in the game you can turn into a speedboat and also evade helicopters dropping bombs on you, so this game makes it into 008 in our review. Next up, Montezuma's Revenge, otherwise known as Traveler's Diarrhea. Anyway, that aside, you play the treasure hunter named Panama Joe, bearing no resemblance whatsoever to Indiana Jones. Panama Joe goes to find treasure deep hidden inside catacombs, but beware, the catacombs are inhabited by nasty monsters. But of course, these monsters are bouncing and rolling skulls, dancing spiders, and of course you're going to have obstacles like disappearing and reappearing chains which you can go up and down. There's lots of fire that's going to burn you to pieces. That's the main gist of it. You go up and down ladders, you find keys to open doors, and of course get that all important gold. Still lots of fun, very basic gameplay, but I defy you not to enjoy it. Next up there's Frogger 2, 3 Deep. I think 3 Deep is because maybe it has 3 different levels. 
Not quite sure. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The main thing is that if you remember Frogger from the year before, 1983, then you'll find that Frogger 2 is a lot more fun. It has three different levels. In the first level, you're underwater, you reach the top of the pond whilst avoiding dangerous alligators and fish, but you can ride a turtle for safety. In the next location or level, you gotta hit the top of the pond by hopping across logs, birds and even a whale to ride the life preserver which is being tugged along by the little tugboat. In the third location, you have to hop across a flock of birds to reach a cloud at the top of the screen. Aww. Each frog has a time limit to safely reach one of the homes on each of the three screens, and you move on to the next level when a frog has safely reached each of the homes on all screens. The first computer in the family home was an IBM PC XT clone, and on the hard drive, a whopping 20 megabyte hard drive, was Sopwith. And I gotta say, not because of the nostalgia reasons, this game has great lasting effect. You can play this all day, every day. It's pretty simple, the idea anyway. You go, you're in a sop with biplane, you try and shoot down enemy planes and destroy all the enemy buildings. And you can play it on your own, or you can play it against the AI of the computer. Either way, it's a lot of fun. It's really, really nice. The controls are a bit finicky, but you do get used to them. Anyway, what more can I say? Just play the game. This game is just so strange, it has to have a place on the list. At number four is Tapper, an action game where you are the beer tapper, a barman, and you have to serve beer to demanding customers. There are four bars. Personally, I've never been to a bar where there are four consecutive bars and one barman to serve all of the bars, but you know what? I'd love to go to that place. Every single person at the bar, there's many of them, there could be three or four people deep in the bars at any one time, they're all really thirsty guys and girls. So you've got to make sure that those beers are flowing all the time and the little bar stewards don't even return their glasses to you. Instead, those empties, you've got to collect them and purvey yet more beverages all pretty much at the same time. What a challenge! What a piece of great fun! Absolutely crazy idea, but they pull it off, the graphics suck, great game. Getting down to the business end now, it's Alley Cat in at number 3. Like Sopwith before it, Alley Cat came on the hard drive of the PC that was stuck in my mum and dad's living room. I gotta tell you, Alley Cat when I was about 8 years old was pretty difficult, but later on in life I have realised that there is many facets to this wonderful little game. It's uh, basically it's a game where you play this little Alley Cat, you can jump off the bins, onto the fence and then into the, all these windows. With each window that you go through, there is a series of different games that are possible to get some of them. Like for example, there's a big block of Swiss cheese in a house. I have got no idea why there's a big, huge, mammoth-sized block of cheese. But anyway, you've got to get the, uh, the little rodent mice that are in there. There's also a bowl which contains fish and you've got to swim about the bowl and avoid the electric eels get all the fish. But don't forget the real prize of this game is to make love to a pretty lady cat which lives in this apartment complex. Once you've mastered that, you too can be the alley cat. In at number two is Zonix, which is a clone of the arcade game Quix. Now there are many other clones of the same game, but the simplicity of this version is what draws me to it. Now all you have to do is go around making rectangles in the space that occupies the main section of the screen, whilst you avoid the enemies. The enemies are on the drawable section of the screen, but also on the perimeter there's one little nasty one that comes after you as well. Look, it's really simple, if you've played Quix you'll know this game inside and out, but I tell you what, it's still great fun and it holds up even today and for that reason it is at the number two position. The first version of Pit Stop came out for the Atari and the Commodore 64 in around 1983. A follow-up, Pit Stop 2, came around in the following year, and this time it had a PC booter version. 
Now the graphics, if you compare them to, well, pretty much any other version, you'll find them particularly wanting. The gameplay, on the other hand, seems pretty much what you want. The exception is it gets a little bit weird when another person pits, for example. Your speed goes up dramatically, and I think that's because the CPU isn't working so hard on a split-screen display. Getting all of that gubbins out of the way, Pit Stop 2 is an incredibly good game. You can play against the computer or you can play against another person. Now, I've got to tell you, two player action back in the 1980s was great fun because you had one person on one side of the keyboard and one person on the other side of the keyboard and that's exactly how I've played it here. It is so good fun. The idea is just simply to run around the track. There are three or four of them to choose from and obviously the Grand Prix where you run around all of them. The dynamic which is added to the game of course is the fact that your tires wear out and your fuel runs out and so you've got a pit halfway through. If you're running three laps it's not that difficult, you don't really need to go in a pit but if you're running six laps or you're playing one of the more difficult levels then you will absolutely need to pit. Pit Stop 2 brings all of the fun of the split screen version of the original Mario Kart back into the 80s. I'm telling you, play this game, you'll see where it all began. Apex did a good one on this one. Pit Stop 2 is number one on the top 10 games of 1984. Well, that's pretty much it. To say that it was an easy choice to make this top 10 was absolutely not the truth. There are many other games that almost made it into the list. Names like Seamus, Gremlins, Below the Root, Amazon, Buck Rogers and the Planet of Zoom, Castle Wolfenstein, Boulder Dash, Zaxxon, Freddy's Rescue Roundup, Hard Hat Mac, Flightmare and Congo Bongo to name but a few all almost made it into the list. There was far too many games in 1984 to choose from but these ones were ones that particularly meant something to me when I reviewed them again this time around. So if you disagree with my list then please let me know in the comments. I would love to know what you think, what your top 10 is and of course if you'd like to subscribe please do so. Until I see you in 1985 with your DeLorean, that's all from me this time. See you soon and thanks for watching.